What is going on, Jerome's firing things up, and we're putting our prediction hat on. And we're going to predict where all these head coaches and GMs end up and who gets hired, who does not quite make it. So we'll, we'll dive on in. And, we're gonna, of course, we're going to put the Vikings last for suspense and, and whatnot. Starting with the Giants, the G-Men, who have been the worst team in the NFL since they won the Super Bowl in 2011. I think that John Mara and Steven Tisch are just tired of being embarrassed, just being an absolute bot clown organization. That's right. So I think that they go with some stability, bringing in Giants. Uh, the Giants bring in Dan Quinn from the Cowboys, as well as Joe Shine, uh, assistant GM of the Bills. Now, this makes a lot of sense because I, I think that uh, the Giants do see what the Bills are doing. The only team in New York State. And they're like, hey, we need to grab some of that before we lose uh, some of our fan base in the Empire State. Uh, even though fan bases don't really switch kind of weird but uh dan quinn he brings stability he brings respect i think that he is a very solid uh head coach and they don't want to take a chance i i don't think that the giants will take a shot on another yet head coach young head coach like joe judge i think that they want stability uh, and win lose or draw at least they can hold their heads up high i think dan quinn is going to be uh that guy also if the Falcons decide to move on from Matt Ryan, because you know GM Terry Fontenot, uh, Arthur Smith, their head coach, maybe they're like, ah, it's time, ah, it's time. Matt Ryan, G men? Question mark? I don't know. That, there we go. Or maybe Joe Shine uh, brings Mitchell Trubisky Ponder down from Buffalo. Oh, get it on! Come on, man. Broncos. So, obviously, their GM is good to go. They got jumping George Payton. Now, what is he going to do? Because I actually do think that Dan Quinn is George Payton's number one choice in Denver. But I, I think that if they miss out on Dan Quinn, I think they swing the other way. I think they go with the youth movement. Jonathan Gannon, D coordinator of the Eagles, where young guy, first year as coordinator, he's highly regarded as a, sort of a defensive wunderkin. Uh, maybe they see him as the next Brandon Staley, as uh, sticking with the AFC West motif. But, yeah, if you're going to play in the – uh, AFC West, you got to have some defense, and Gannon could bring that. He's got some great pieces with uh, PS2, uh, as well as Justin Simmons, Bradley Chubb, etc. So, yeah. Now, if, if they can just find a quarterback, also who's Gannon going to bring in as OC? TBD there. Up next, Jacksonville Jaguars. They're good to go with Trent Balky. Well, not really, but he's there. Jaguars. I mean, this one's pretty easy. I mean, this one's pretty easy. I think they are all in on keeping Byron Leftwich in the Sunshine State. Leftwich, the former quarterback of the Jaguars, back in the day, uh, get, got a lot of credit to call plays for Bruce Arians and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But uh, I feel like the knock on Leftwich is how much of it is B.A., who, who obviously is a great play caller in his own right, no risk and no biscuit, and also how much is the Buc of the Bucks' offense is Tom friggin' Brady, right? But Leftwich is that dude. Uh, I think that Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence, back-to-back -back number one overall picks. I do think that they go offensive tackle uh, at Equinu, NC State. Let's go. Yeah, I think they buck the trend. Uh, even though Hutchinson deserves to be a one, maybe even Thibodeau one, but yeah, I think they go offensive tackle there. So Jacksonville gets their guy into – Vegas and the Raiders. That's right. So, John Gruden, Rich Bisaccia, gone. I, yeah, I don't think that Bisaccia holds on to the job. And also, Mike Mayock, gone. He can go back to NFL Network. I love Mike Mayock uh, during the draft telecast, man. So, hopefully, he gets uh, his seat back. But the Raiders, they want to make a splash. So, ooh, baby, baby, going all in. Getting Jim Harbaugh, paying him $12 million a year. Don't care. Don't care, man. Plus, Ed Dodds, he's already withdrawn his name from the Bears GM search because I think he realized it's the Bears also. I think that he could be the favorite to get the Raiders job, so he's installed. Uh, you know, Colts, you know, I, I don't even know what his role is with the Colts, but, yeah, it's whatever there. But, yeah, coming on in, it's about Jim Harbaugh. It's about Derek Carr. Oh, he's na 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 Where? With the Raiders, I feel like you always have to be splashy. I don't think the Raiders can ever just take a sort of a – no name, young, uh, up and coming head coach. Even though that's how they got John Madden, that's how they got Flores. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know, man. Next up, Texans. Speaking of Flores, Brian Flores. Yeah, I, I think the moment that uh, Flores was fired by the Dolphins, Nick Casario, uh, the GM of the Texans, was like in, in, and Flores and Watson reports reportedly do have a solid connection. So maybe Deshaun does stay in Houston even after essentially sitting last year out. I don't know. But, yeah, Flores, 
I think is a true leader of men. I think he could fix that Texans defense. I, I think they certainly do go defense at number three overall, uh, taking whoever's left over from uh, Thibodeau and Aiden Hutchinson uh, if Jacksonville goes offensive tackle at one. So get some. I get some, man. But Chicago Bears, the crooked Chicago Bears. <sighs> This one hurts. Monty Fort, the pride of Laverne, Minnesota, probably grew up a Vikings fan, going to Chicago. <sighs> but it be what it be. Also, I think that gives you a hint of who we're going to pick to be the Vikings GM. But Matt Eberflus, uh, he, I think he's the only head coach who's on his second interview. Uh, so the Bears are certainly all in. The Colts defensive coordinator, they want to get into the Eberflus business, even though no one can pronounce his name, let alone spell it. That, 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 Eberflus, that Bears. But, but uh, the Bears... Moving on from the Matt Nagy regime, maybe they swing the other way. I'll try to rebuild that defense. They do have some nice pieces there. Jalen, 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 Jalen. Cheeseburger, Eddie Jackson, King of Better. Roquan is a stud. They got the leftovers of Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack. Go ahead. Ah, go ahead. So, yeah, I think that's a good landing spot for or ever Everflutes. Nailed it. And can he develop Justin Fields? Can he uh, strike up a rapport uh, with Fields, even though Everflutes comes from a defensive background? Or is it going to be Mike Zimmer? I, I don't know. I don't know. How, how, can we fit all this on the uh, on one page? Come on, man. Zoom in and enhance. There we go. Ah, fine. Uh, you are now just going to be M. Mossenford. Ooh, ooh, Mossenford. You got Mossenford, Ted. Anyways, close enough. Dolphins. So they got their uh, GM, Chris Greer, in place. Now, I, I don't think the Dolphins are going to get high-end head coaching interest I, I don't think so mainly because ownership questionable with steven ross as well as gm chris greer could be seen as a lame duck and if you're a head coach the last thing that you want to have happen is the gm who hired you be fired because the new gm he didn't hire you man so he's you're not tied to the job so i think that they have to go veteran i think they go retread i think they stay in division leslie Frazier. He's done great things with that Bills defense, him and McDermott. Uh, but they stay in division. You know, they see the Bills twice a year. Leslie gets a second bite at the apple. To me, I think Leslie was a solid leader. I think that he wasn't ready for the Vikings uh, in 2011. And also the Vikings in 2011 had so many bringing issues. Right? Mainly Christian Bonner. <laughs> also, oh, I forgot Donovan McNabb. Come on, man. Let's go, son. Yeah, Leslie didn't succeed in Minnesota for a bunch of reasons, but he gets a second chance in Miami. They do have some nice pieces on defense. Love me some Jerome Baker, Javon Holland, Christian Wilkins, uh, Tua, whatever he's going to be. They do have Jalen Waddell. Offensive line starting to come together, so yeah, who really knows? And finally, the Minnesota Vikings, of course. I start with the GM. So, like I've said, if it's not Austin Fort, I love me some Ryan Poles. I think that he has been in the war rooms with the Chiefs. I think that they've done a phenomenal job assembling that roster, balancing superstars with everyone else, even though sometimes it didn't work out early on in the season. But the way that the Chiefs flipped the script on that offensive line and bringing in a guy like Trey Smith in the sixth round and Creed Humphrey in the second round and be, not being afraid to play rookies, I think that Poles needs to bring that. And as as of right now, uh, again, we're, we're not going to speculate on who could, could, could be interviewing for a head coach, but uh, top of my list is D'Amico Ryans. So, yeah, Ryans and Ryan. Yeah, let's go, man. Yeah, let's go. Ryan. Right. And also, if you're, if you're a parent of kids who are under five, you know the name Ryan. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But D'Amico Ryan's, for me, a true leader of men. He's going to instill some discipline on that defense. Plus, he will be the head coach of the entire team. You know, great former player, former team captain, linebacker with the Texans. Uh, I think that he will assimilate and become just the CEO of the entire franchise. I think that he, he's a great leader. I think that he'll bring a, a great offensive uh, coordinator with him as well. So, I think we'll get things done. So, yeah. I would be very happy if this is how it went down. But also, so you look at who got head coaching jobs. Quinn, Gannon, Leftwich, Harbaugh, Flores, Eberflus, uh, Frazier, and uh, D'Amico Ryans. Guys who were left out. Josh McDaniels, again. Uh, uh, Niners OC, Mike McDaniels. Not so much. Brian Dayball sitting out again. Eric Bieniemy, who only has one interview request so far, even though he said that he's not, he doesn't want interviews, but teams just haven't requested him. And also Doug... Plus Packers OC, Nathaniel Hackett, not so much. So, yeah. Uh, again, these are shooting from the hip predictions. Actually, what if we hit this parlay? What if we get all uh, all 12 of these predictions right? We should put a jelly bean on that. 
Yeah, there you go. Uh, but your thoughts are thoughts. Predicting general manager, head coaching, hires, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once more, the work put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.